Hi there, we're in the lab with your mate JJ. So today we continue on with our Sensor Robot 20, which is uh, affectionately known to us as the 20 in 1. It's the Maxitronics project lab that we're currently working through. Uh, today we're up to project number 4, it's called the Light Alarm with Latch. Um, so uh, we'll take you over to the booth and we'll put this guy together and then once that's done we'll bring it over to the bench and we'll have a look at it. Let's get on with it. Here we are in the booth. So we're just getting ready to do our next circuit. The, uh, the next circuit's called uh, the Light Alarm with Latch. Light Alarm with Latch. It's uh, project number four. So uh, looks like we're all clear here. So I'll throw you over to the book cam and we'll have a look at the, uh, the manual. Here we are on the book cam. So this is uh, project number four, light alarm with latch. What it does. You have already seen the results <coughs> of light on a CDS cell. Uh, you have also noted the relationship between light, the cell, and the resistance of the cell. The brighter the light, the lower the resistance, and the greater the conductivity. To demonstrate this action, adjust the control to the threshold. <coughs> Uh, the buzzer stops. Then, conceal the robot in a dresser drawer. Now open the drawer. The cell activates the circuit, which begins to operate. But this circuit has a provision to lock in the on mode until you electrically break the circuit with a switch. The buzzer continues to sound regardless of the light level. How it works. In this project, when you illuminate the CDS cell brightly, transistor Q5 turns on and Q1 in the bistable multi-vibrator circuit in block 1 is turned on. In a bistable multi-vibrator circuit, when one transistor turns on, the other turns off. This on-off cycle is repeated until an external source changes the state of either transistor. Because of this circuit, when Q1 turns off, Q2 stays off <coughs> even if Q5 is turned on by a weak light on the cell. During this change, Q2 and Q6 continue in the on state. The flip-flop output of the circuit is fed to the base of Q6. As a result, a square wave voltage appears on the collector of Q6. This keeps the buzzer operating. There you go. So this is the light alarm with latch. So uh, throw you over to the, to the bench, or the booth I should say. And uh, let's put this guy together. So, uh, start off with good old one to three, wiring our um, our battery uh, into the control switch. I should probably just leave this wire in there because it's it's in every circuit. Uh, then we've got two to five. So two to five is just taking the uh, the other side of the power supply, the negative side of the power supply, over to the input of the variable resistor which is used as a control a control variable resistor and then we've got 5 to 17 so uh, 17 it looks like it's over here okay so we're wiring in the key uh, yes so it, we'll probably have to press the key to break the uh, the circuit because it's got a latch and the latch will hold until something changes, so that's what uh, that's what the key is for, I imagine. So we'll send that over to seventeen to the key, and then we've got thirty-two, seventeen to thirty-two. Where is thirty-two? It's down here in the multi-vibrator block one. I'm not sure if a blue wire will make it. No, don't want, don't like using up the yellows because we've only got four yellows. So, uh, never use a yellow when a blue will do. I think that's the rule. Now, uh, that was 32. 32 to 63. That's going to be over here. Yep, that's Q5. Okay. Thirty-two to sixty-three. I uh, I ended up on. Hang on a sec. Okay, 63 to 38, 63 to 
38. Yeah, as I was saying, I, I ended up on LinkedIn. I don't spend much time on LinkedIn. Uh, and I found a message from my old boss who I worked for like 20 years ago. And uh, he sent it <laughs> like a year and a half ago. And I only just got it yesterday because I never go to LinkedIn. Anyway, I'm having a bit of a chat with my old boss. So that that's nice, isn't it? <sighs> 42. He's retired now. So, 42. I, uh, I was really my first programming job. He was my boss back in the year 2000. 38 to 42, and then 42 to 48. So we're just wiring in Q3 and Q4. I think uh, this particular circuit's going to use all of the transistors. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. All six transistors used in this circuit. So uh, putting all of our components to good use. I have to say this uh, this is only project four, and we're already using all of the transistors. I, I'm quite impressed with this um, this uh, little sensor robot 20. I thought it was going to be um, crap, but I actually quite like it. I quite like it indeed. The, one of the things I like about this is that um, <clears throat> it, uh, it it doesn't have any radio circuits. You know, the 10 in one, like half the circuits were radios. And I'd just rather do this digital stuff with transistors. Though it is important to remember that a transistor is actually an analog device. You can do digital stuff with them, but uh, but they're not strictly digital, are they? Anyway, so we just wired in uh, 48. So now we've got 6 to 53. So 6 is the middle of our control. And 53, it's going to be... Looks like a resistor. Yep. I reckon blue will get us there. What do you reckon? Just yes. All right. Six to fifty-three. Something's beeping at me over there. I wonder what that was. Um, six to fifty-three, and then seven to fifteen. Seven, and where is fifteen? Here. Okay, so that's wiring in the CDS cell. Seven to fifteen. I'm getting the hang of these wires. They're not so bad once you get used to them. Uh, nine to sixty-five. So here's nine, and sixty-five is here. I reckon a blue will make that as well. What do you reckon? Just nine to sixty-five. And then we've got 65 to 50. Now where's 50? 50 is just here. It's a resistor. I wonder if I'll get a hat that. I'll, I'll learn where all the... We've got 20 projects to do. Do you think I'll remember where the, the numbered devices are? Who knows? 65 to 50. What I do remember is 31 and 41, because they're the ones that are actually difficult to see. Yeah. All right, so we wired in 50. Now we're going to do 16 to 36. So we've got uh, 16, that's the other side of the key, to 36, which is the base of Q2. And I think a blue wire will get us there. What do you reckon? Yep. All right, so... Just confirming 16 to 36. Yes. 16 to 36. You know, <clears throat> I haven't been able to decide, to decide if it, it would be better to do the uh, the build on uh, time lapse and then just, you know, make it all happen really quickly or if people like watching me put it together and chat at them while I do it. Uh, 30 to 37. Alright. So there's 30 and there's 37. That's easy. 
just a little white one will do 13 to 37 and then we got uh, 37 to 66 okay so that's putting the uh, collector of Q2 over to the emitter of Q6 there you go blue will do us just going to confirm that that's 30 to 37 and then 37 to 66 all right and then we got 31 to 34 31 is here and 34 is nearby just there <clears throat> so that's uh that's collect uh, the collector of q1 over to the resistor, the 33k resistor, which is connected through to the base of Q2. There we go. That was 31 to 34. And then we've got 33 to 62. So there's 33. And here's 62. So that's connecting the base of Q1 over to the collector of Q5, the base of Q1 to the collector of Q5. Yeah, and so uh, as I was saying, compared to the 10 in 1, this particular guy doesn't actually have a um, an aerial rod on him. There's no radio circuits in this at all. And there is this cool little uh, integrated circuit. I think it's an it's an LM. Oh, it's a BA728. BA728. I think that's the type of uh, amplifier. All right, so we've gone through to 62. So now we're going to do 41 to 67. So where is 41? It's here. And 67 is here. Okay, so we've got a... A little capacitor in here. Just confirming. 41. 41. To 67. There it is. And then we've got uh, 43 to 70. 43. To 70. Oh, we're going to use another one of our capacitors. So we've got two capacitors in this circuit. Uh, 4167, 43 to 70. So that's the uh, the base of Q3 over to one of our ceramic capacitors. The second ceramic capacitor. And we've got 45 to 44. So that looks like just wiring in some transistors here. This is... Uh, the collectors of Q4 and Q3. Oh no, that's not right, is it? Now, this is feeding back the uh, collector of Q4 into the base of Q4 uh, via the 10K resistor. And then 44 to 40. This uh, little thing where we connect them all across here, that seems to be quite common. It was a pattern that we've seen before. So uh, that's connecting the base of uh, Q4 through to the uh, base of Q3. Uh, sort of, not directly. It goes through the uh, resistors there. And then we've got 40 to 39. This is just as it was last time. So, uh, put a guy in there. And. Uh, 39 to 35. So where is 35? Up here. 35. Okay, it's the um, it's the resistor, the 1K resistor, which it goes through to the collector of Q2. Looks like a red wire will do it. Just confirming 39 to 35. That's right. 39 to 35. 
And then we've got uh, 35 to 8. So it looks like it's going up here to the buzzer. Yep, okay. 35, 35, 38, 35 to 8, 35 to 8, very good, <clears throat> and then 8 to 4, what's that, that's, uh, okay, that's wiring in the, the buzzer to the, uh, the power switch, And then we got 4 to 14. 4 to 14. So that's more power over to the CDS cell. 4 there. And 14. And then we got 14 to 29. 29's the resistor that's connected to the collector of Q1. Just confirming 14 to 20. 9, 14 to 29, that's correct. 14 to 29. Alright. And then uh, 29 to 49. Where's 49? It's on the other side of the board here. There it is. It's the uh, 1K resistor in the resistor block. 29 to 49. 29. And then we've got 46 to 68. Okay, 46 over here, it's the uh, base of Q4. And 68, it's our ceramic capacitor, the first one. 46 to 68. Was that right, 68? Yes, that's right. All right, and then uh, 47 to 69. Uh, 47 is the uh, collector of Q4. And 69. It's the other ceramic capacitor over here. That's 47 to 69. <laughs> and then uh, 69 to 55. 55 is one of our resistors in the resistor block, it's the uh, 10k resistor, just confirming, uh, 47 to 69, 69 to 55, it's 55 and 69, okay, and then we got 40, uh, sorry, 54 to 61, 54, to 61. Just a little little one there connecting uh, the 10k oh no the 3. Point, the 3.9k resistor over to the base of Q5 is that right? 54 to 61. Yep, that's right. Okay. And then we've got one last one to do. 56 to 64. 56, 64. So that's just wiring in our 10K resistor to the base of Q6. Fifty-six, sixty-four. Fifty-six to sixty-four. There we go. So how did we how did we go? Pretty good by the looks of it. So let's take this guy over to the bench and have a look at it. Here we are on the bench. So we're just going to um, test our new circuit. This is circuit number four. And we're just going to attach power here. We've got positive and negative, and uh, let's throw him on. Okay. Oh dear, it's a bit noisy, 
isn't it? But this is not what I was expecting. Hmm. I have to check the wiring. I wonder if we threw the uh, the buzzer through a resistor if that would uh, make it a bit quieter because uh, it's really quite distracting when it's beeping at you, isn't it? And we need to um, we need to have it beeping for the test. Hmm, I don't know. You know, I'm going to just uh, grab an LED. Here's an LED. It's an orange one. Um, and I believe the short leg is the... Uh, is the um, cathode. Let's try just putting that in there. I have no idea what will happen when we do this. Let's see what happens, huh? So let's uh, power him on. Okay. Well, the buzzer works, but the LED didn't go on at all. I wonder if I got the polarity wrong. Maybe. Put him the other way around and see what happens, huh? Yep, there he goes. And, uh... <clears throat> um... It, it did actually quiet the, the resistor. It's not... The, the tone isn't so bad, is it? Okay, when the, when the key is down... It's supposed to be... Ah, oh, there we go. Interesting. It's, uh... It's not working the way I would expect it to work. This key is kind of terrible. Okay, when the key's all the way down, it stays up. You put that down and cover that. Yeah, uh, this doesn't behave the way that I was expecting it to behave. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, we've got it tuned well enough that it works. So, when the <coughs> we can see here when the um, when the sensor activates the um, bi-stable multi vibrator. Um, oh, that's not what I was expecting. Okay, look, let's just uh, 
um, read the uh, the instructions again together. <coughs> okay, so it says, project number four, light alarm with latch. What it does, you have already seen the results of light on a CDS cell. You have also noted the relationship between light, the cell, and the resistance of the cell. The brighter the light, the lower the resistance, and the greater the conductivity. To demonstrate this act action, adjust control to the threshold. The buzzer stops. Okay, adjust the control to the threshold, and the buzzer stops. There we go. Okay, then conceal the robot in a dresser drawer. Now open the drawer. So we close that and open the drawer. Okay, nothing happened. The cell activates the circuit which begins to operate. But this, well it didn't, did it? Uh, uh, but this circuit has a provision to lock in the on mode until you electri electrically break the circuit with a switch. The bu buzzer continues to sound regardless of the light level. Ah, dear me. So, um, in block one, this multivibrator is supposed to be a bi-stable multivibrator. And a bi-stable multivibrator stays in the stays in its state until the other state gets triggered. So it stays. Uh, and it can be triggered here either by the CDS cell, which is hooked up to uh, I believe that yes. So Q6 is wired in for the CDS cell and Q5 is wired for the piezo actually we could just look here at the schematic so Q5 controls the bi-stable uh, multivibrator and then this second multivibrator is an A-stable multivibrator with the capacitors note that the bi-stable um, multivibrator doesn't have any capacitors in it it just has the Q5 uh, controlling Q1 and then the key controlling Q2 um, and then and then the, the A stable multivibrator is for um, creating the tone that goes through the, uh, the, the buzzer so um, as I understand it that the CD the CDS cell when it activates it'll put the multivibrator in 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 the on mode and then we press the key supposed to take it into the off mode and I don't understand that little bit there where it Okay, all right. It doesn't latch though, does it? Uh, no, I thought that that was supposed to latch. Yeah, all right. So if we hold the key down that turns it off. That's okay. Release the key. Goes on. So it kind of does latch. Kinda. But only... Yeah, okay. I, uh... 
it really doesn't work the way I thought that it would. I thought when you triggered it on, I'm going to have to check the wiring again. I'm just going to um, I'm just going to stop the video for a minute, and I'm going to go over the wiring, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and what I've done is I've just put my multimeter onto uh, continuity mode. So when we when we put the things together, we get uh, we get uh, a beep. So I figured we could do this together. It's not going to be exactly uh, riveting stuff, but uh, we'll just check him. Uh, uh, very thoroughly. Um, I've got power switched off, so it's still connected, but it's not on. Uh, so we're going to check one and three. That's working. And then two and five. That's working. And five and seventeen. Five and seventeen. That's working. And seventeen and thirty-two. Seventeen and thirty-two. That's working. And then 32 and 63, 63, that's working. And then uh, 63 and 38, and uh, 38, there's 38 and 63, that's working. And 38 and 42, 38 and 42, uh, there and there, that's working. And then uh, 42 and 48, that's working. And then we got uh, six and fifty-three. All right, we got six and fifty-three. So that's uh, here. That's working. And then seven and fifteen. There's seven and fifteen. That's working. And then nine and sixty-five. Nine. And uh, 65, 65, where is that? Here, okay. And uh, then we got 65 and 50, 65 and 50, that's working. <coughs> and then we got 16 and 36. Where is 36? That's working. 16 and 36. And then 30 and 37. So uh, this is 30 and this is 37. That's working. And 37 and 66. 37 and 66. That's working. <coughs> and then 31 and 34. 31 and 34. That's working. And then 33 and 62, 33 and 62, that's working. And 41 and 67, so let's do uh, 41 and 67, that's working. And then we got 43 and 70, so we got 43 and 70, that's working. <coughs> and 45 to 44. So, uh, 45, oh yeah, 45 to 44, no problem. And then uh, 44 to 40, no problem. And then 40 to 39, I suppose. Yep, yep. And then 39 to 35, 35, that's working. All right, and then 35 to 8, 35 to 8. That's working, and then eight to four, eight to four, that's working, and then four to fourteen, four to fourteen, that's working, and then fourteen to twenty-nine, where is twenty-nine, here, that's working, and twenty-nine to forty-nine, twenty-nine to forty-nine, that's working, and then forty-six to sixty-eight, so we've got uh, 46 to 68, that's working. And then 47 to 69, 47 to 69, 
Is that working? Yeah, that's okay. And then uh, 69 to 55. 55 is here. That's working. And then uh, 54 to 61. 54 to 61. There we go. And then 56 to 64. 56 to 64. All right, well, there doesn't seem to be any uh, any problems with the wiring, does there? Unless the problem is some sort of a short circuit somewhere. But uh, I'm not seeing that anywhere. I don't think that's what's happening here. All right. So let's just keep on reading what it says here. It says the cell activate, which begins to operate, but this circuit has a provision to lock in the on mode until you electrically break the circuit with a switch. The buzzer continues to sound regardless of the light level. But that is not true. That is not working that way. And I don't know why it doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. I, uh, I suppose it's possible that the... Do you think that the LED... No, I don't think that the LED will be affecting that bi-stable multi-vibrator. It's, it's, it's not even on that part of the circuit. It's all isolated over here on the uh, Q6 that's all controlled. So that part of the circuit there, it's all controlled by the uh, this transistor and the rest of it. So I... I'm going to assume that this LED that I've put in there, which serves two purposes, it gives us a visual signal and it also sucks up some voltage and current so that the buzzer doesn't make this annoying racket while we test this thing. So if you reckon I've got that wrong, please let me know in the comments. Um, but I, I do believe that, that, that this uh, diode here is, is fine to use in this circuit. Um, it's not latching, it's supposed to latch. So as I understand it, um, when the light cell gets triggered, the bistable multivibrator is supposed to go into that mode and then it'll stay in that mode regardless of what the CDS cell does until the, the other um, part of the circuit gets triggered. Um, but that's not what happens. Look, let's power this guy on and we'll turn this up and then give him some light. Now it's triggered, and it's supposed to have triggered that bi-stable multi-vibrator, so if we change that, it's not supposed to affect the um, affect the circuit anymore, but it does. It's, it hasn't latched, has it? But if we hold that down and cover this, uh, kind of, and then we move it, I I, uh, I don't understand the behavior. It, it's it's not what I was expecting. The the lower the the resistance, the more it stays on. So it's kind of latched, kind of latched there. Yeah, it definitely doesn't latch in the on mode, and it's supposed to. But that CDS cell is just working. It's just working as the controller. It's it's not latching. I'm gonna have to um just I don't I don't know. I just checked all of the wiring. I'm just gonna give. I'm just gonna take a break for a minute. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So um, I've got the circuit working the way that it's supposed to work. Um, I don't understand uh, really what's changed between now and what we were doing earlier. But one of the things is that this um, uh, uh, LED that I introduced, 
that's been removed so that's not part of the circuit anymore I didn't think it would affect the circuit materially but maybe it does if you understand how that LED on on sort of on the on the right hand side of this circuit over here would be affecting the the function of the bistable multi vibrator on the left hand part of the circuit here if you understand how that's happening I'd love to hear or or, or maybe it's not I don't know but um, I've also adjusted the control uh, resistor to be just so it's it's switched over here at the moment it's on to number eight um, uh, uh, which is for what it's worth now when we turn this thing on I'm gonna I'm gonna cover the light cell and I'm gonna apply power okay and that's come on now if I cl clover the cell and press the toggle switch then the 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 uh, the the bistable multi vibrator has gone into the sort of right hand mode which is where the key has activated the right hand state now when i take my finger off the cds cell the um the the tone will go so there it goes now when i try and cover the cds cell nothing changes because the uh, bistable multi vibrator has been triggered but when i i cover the cell and press the key uh, then it triggers back into the into the right hand mode and it disengages the thing So when I take my finger off it goes on if I put my finger on it doesn't do anything if I uh, Cover it and press the key then it's in the in that mode and it's all working So we did actually get this circuit to work as advertised one thing I might do. I'll just uh, Turn the power off and I'll put this back in the LED that we had just for testing purposes and let's see if it still works uh, properly with that in there now you see oh no that's not necessarily wrong okay no see look at that it doesn't latch it doesn't latch when there's a LED in that part of the circuit now if I take the LED out then it does latch doesn't it? Fascinating. So that that LED affects the function of the of the circuit, but I don't understand why. I don't understand why. Uh, let's see if we can figure it out. What 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 would uh, an extra uh, extra current draw over here how could that affect the bistable oscillator over here I don't know I really don't understand why that LED affects the circuit in a, in any way at all uh, but it does so there's a, a, a mystery for, for John who knows who knows but look let's just do it one last time there we go, it's triggered, it's latched, we cover it, we press the key, it stops, we move it, we cover it, it's latched, we press the key, it stops. So uh, there we go, we got, our, we got our key working in the end. We didn't use our, um, our, uh, our scope for anything. I was thinking we might... Uh, let's just, um, let's have a look at the... Uh, at the um, uh, let's just see what happens with the um, oh that's interesting the uh, Fascinating. So I just connected what about that. Wow. So this <laughs> um, just connecting the scope probe uh, changed the tuning of the circuit. Fascinating. Put that there. Yep. If I if I uh, if I put the scope probe 
on either side of the CDS cell, it affects the resistance sufficiently. <laughs> it's, it's only grounded, mind you. It's just the ground pin. Uh, wow. So I wasn't expecting that. What else can we look at? I suppose we could have a look at the... Um, just at the oscillating signal uh, from the from that that produces the tone. Let's try that. Turn him on, and uh, there we go. All right, we'll just turn channel two off. We don't want him. And uh, there we go. So it's pretty much a square wave, isn't it? You cover that and press that. All right and it goes flat and then bang and it uh, it begins oscillating so that's just the square wave that's being sent in to drive the tone um, fair enough I wanted to get a look at the at the change in resistance across the uh, <sighs> yeah across the CDS cell, but that didn't seem to work. It, it seemed to affect it pretty substantially. Anyway, at least we got the thing working. So uh, just one last demo. It latches, changing it doesn't make any difference now. Cover it, press the key, bang, it goes in. So we got our, uh, our multi, uh, our bi-stable multi-vibrator working correctly. Um, the A-stable multi-vibrator drives the, um, uh, the, the buzzer. And we don't, well, I don't understand why putting that circuit, uh, that LED into the circuit affects the, the, the uh, um, bi-stable multivibrator, but it does. So uh, that's a surprise to me. If you understand that, I'd love to hear from you about how that's not working or as, as I expected it to. Anyway, I'll turn that off and we'll throw you over to the farewell cam to wrap up so uh, there we are there all right so that was uh, project 4 light alarm with latch um, we did get it working in the end the way that it's supposed to work seems that uh, putting in that LED um, uh, affects the the operation of the of the bi-stable multivibrator one thing to note about the bi-stable multi-vibrator is there's no need in that circuit for the capacitors. So the capacitors are um, what regulate the, the, the frequency of the A-stable multi-vibrator in conjunction with the resistors, of course. So if you change the capacitors or you change the resistors, you would change the tone. Um, so that... that um, uh, that that multivibrator with the two uh, transistors and the and the and the four uh, uh, resistors and the two capacitors, that's there just to drive the um, the, the the buzzer. Um, and then there was the other multivibrator, which is what they call, as you said, a bi-stable multivibrator. And the thing about that is, um, when it triggers, when a state gets triggered, it stays in that state until the other state gets triggered. Um, so, uh, and we got that working the way that it's supposed to. So when the CDL, CDS cell triggers the circuit, uh, changing the CDS cell doesn't affect it any further. Um, and you press the key and that'll go back and then the CDS cell will be disactivated, deactivated until uh, it gets enough uh, light and then it'll activate again. Um, so yeah, that was really quite interesting. I'm glad that we got it to work the way that it's supposed to work. Um, I don't understand why we had trouble, um, but we did. So, uh, yeah, that concludes project number four. Uh, next project is going to be uh, light-controlled organs. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.